hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, well, thanks for joining me on day nine. We are looking at Matthew 5. This is the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, this is Jesus' first public teaching. Uh, we've already seen, we saw yesterday that Jesus uh, has started his ministry by going and finding disciples and going out and uh, finding people that need to be healed and uh, you know, really a- attracting attention to himself. And uh, these great crowds start to follow him. And the, s- the scene and the setting here is that a crowd has followed him here to this mountainside where it's a, it's a perfect place for doing this kind of teaching. And Matthew gives a lot of time and, and effort towards the Sermon on the Mount because um, it's so good. It is 100% Jesus' words, and uh, the next few chapters, 5, 6, and 7, are all devoted to 100% Jesus in this message. So we will be in the Sermon on the Mount for 10 days now, um, and it's great. I'm pumped about it. Before we go on to the reading, I just have to call it out. Um, yesterday I had on the board a bold prediction um, that uh, the Packers were going to beat the Buccaneers and continue to be undefeated, and I was wrong. I was really wrong. Packers fell apart, and uh, shout out to everyone who called me out on it. So appreciate that, and uh, I'm fine. It's okay. I'm mourning a little bit, um, but we'll find out here that uh, maybe we're all mourning, so it's okay. Um, All right, let's go ahead and dig in. This is Matthew 5, starting at verse 1. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those, those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Um, what an interesting place for Jesus to start his public teaching, these Beatitudes. And I kind of think back to, um, you know, Sunday school when I was a kid. And, uh, man, you want to be these attitudes, Beatitudes. And um, as corny as that is, like, I, 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 I believe it. I think that these are attitudes to, to have, to feel, to be. And uh, certainly that name doesn't come out of that. It's, it's a Latin kind of thing that... Um, a phrase that was created, but um, I I think why this is so beautiful and maybe so tough is is that it shows kind of a uh, just a, a fraction of, of what our reality is and, and what is hard. So Jesus starts each of these phrases with a harsh reality, and then he ends it with the things that we want. And um, I think all of us want these things, the kingdom of heaven, to be comforted, to inherit the earth, to be satisfied, to have mercy, see God, be a son of God. And then he finishes it off with the kingdom of heaven again. And um, You know, I I think there's no mistake because those things all exhibit what the kingdom of heaven is. And frankly, it exhibits what the Garden of Eden was. Um, You know, we we had all that stuff. The reason that we want these things on on the second half of each of these statements is that it's what what we had. And hopefully it's where we're headed to. But in order to get there, we got to deal with these harsh realities. And it, it really makes me think of this expectation gap thing that I coach people with. You know, this um, thought that our hopes and our expectations are far from our realities. And there's a lot of disappointment, dissatisfaction, distress in, in you know, this gap. And Jesus is talking about that. And he's encouraging us to to own the fact that we mourn and own the fact that we're persecuted, own these hard realities, because if we do well with that, we will get what we want when it comes to 
um, heaven, when it comes to being with Jesus. You know, we just have to trust him with these things that we don't want and endure it the right way. So I know it's hard and I know you're probably facing some expectation gap and finding it hard to have a good B attitude. If you're struggling with that, man, I would love to help you with that. If you're a guy or a couple, um, I'd love to coach you. Uh, you know, I don't want this to just be an advertisement for Tiller Coaching, but check out the website if there's a way that I can help you with that. And I, I hope that um, today's lesson is just an encouragement of like, you are not where you want to be because you're not where you should be. So, uh, of, of course, I'm a skidge over today. So thanks for being a part of this. We continue on with Matthew 5 tomorrow. I'll see you there. Thank you.